answer any question of the Planning Commission. Groups are requested to select spokesmen <clears throat> to express the group's concern because each side will be allowed 10 minutes to speak. Platts rezoning, uh, revised master plans, and street uh, renaming require a public hearing, after which the Planning Commission <clears throat> will deliberate and render its decision. Planning Commission members with a personal or financial interest in any petitioner's request are required to recuse themselves. Um, have we got any changes at all, Tommy? No. Okay, let's go over the minutes. Does anybody have a... I've got a couple. Um, on um, item number seven, if I remember correctly, the motion was to deny was made by Mr. Reeves. Is that not correct, sir? All right. And uh, the second was by Mr. Reed. And the vote was all the, um, all the, all the eyes that, that you have were correct, but the nays were both abstained. So there were no nays and the two were abstained? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Okay. We'll go back and double check. But we may know okay, that. is anybody else, do y'all remember that? Is that correct? That's correct. That's, That's correct, right. okay. Yeah, I know why it stained. Yes, and I know I did after you did. I copied you. All right, Tommy, you want to start us off? Sure. The first item is by Jeff Code Engineers and Surveyors on behalf. Oh, 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 Tommy, I'm sorry, we didn't approve. Uh, could we approve a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, Tommy. Okay, this request is on behalf of Callie McBride Petaway requesting to rezone one parcel of land containing 0.95 acres on the northwest corner of Motley Drive and Old Wetumpka Highway from R60D and B2 to a PGH 35 district. Okay. You want to? Yes. I'm Guthrie Jeffcoat of Jeffcoat Engineers and Surveyors, 928 South Hull Street, 36104. Uh, as you know, this has been delayed so that uh, the pedaways could try to reason a little bit with some of the neighbors, and this is what we think is best for all concern, you know, some of this property is present in own B2, and it could be in a convenience store put up at any time legally, but he wants all of it to be PGH 35, wants to put only six structures out there. And uh, to me, it'll be a plus in a community that's just, th that area is just growing weeds and snakes right now. So we would appreciate your uh, affirmative on the rezoning. Thank you. Okay. Anyone with a comment or question? How did the uh, public hearing go? How did the hearings go? Sir? How did the hearings with the neighbors? How did the hearing with well, the I neighbors I have Mr. Go? Petaway here with me if, he, if we'd like some of those questions yeah. asked. You'd like, would you come up, Mr. Petaway? Am I on? Yeah. He had a question concerning the meeting that I think that you had. Sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Reed. How did the hearings go with the neighbors? Say, I can hear you. How did the hearings go with the neighbors? Did you have a hearing? I had a, me I had a meeting, but it didn't go too well. They, you know, for us, I've been in this community 56 years. I've been there all my life, working all my life there. The, the, the buy land so I can do the work. Then when I come to do the work, they complain, but there ain't nothing being done. So I, I went to the meeting to try to, to, to work it out, but they didn't want to work it out. Because it started out with duplexes. They didn't want the duplexes because 
So we went to the smaller houses, and, and they don't want the smaller houses. They don't really, I don't think they really want that. Is there someone there from the other side, what they do want? Well, let's wait just a minute. We'll, we'll give them an opportunity, right. Frank, because right. I think we'll there's a couple that. of questions here on the planning okay. commission, too. Mr. Riggs? Yeah. Is that on a uh, sewer out there or a septic system? Oh, no, sewer. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, the Planning Commission? Okay. Sir, uh, anyone wish to speak for or against? If you would, please come to the microphone and give your name and address, please, sir. My name is Greg Roberts. I am uh, president of the North Montgomery Neighborhood Alliance. And on behalf of the uh, residents of Madison Park community residing on Motley Drive, Fuller Road, and Old Wetumpka Highway, we would like to express opposition to the proposed rezoning of property located on Motley Drive and Old Wetumpka Highway. Would you give your address, please, sir? 25 Motley Drive. OK, I'm sorry. <clears throat> there are several issues that are uh, just have not been properly addressed. But one thing that's overwhelming community preference for single family housing as indicated by the survey that we did. What we did, we uh, surveyed the 26 closest properties to the site. Sure. Absolutely, yes, thank you. Mr. Roberts, it's, I promise you it's the, it's the microphone, it's not you. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you don't mind just speaking uh, loud and into it, we would yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you. <clears throat> There's overwhelming community preference for single family housing only. Um, that we met with Mr. Pettyway on July the 19th. Uh, this, this, this rezoning issue actually started back in May and it was, uh, the first week of July before Mr. Pettaway came out to and actually tried to talk to the residents on the streets in, Mad in um, <clears throat> on Motley Drive. I talked to him on approximately the first week of July um, in my front yard. Uh, Mr. Pettaway, he gave us a miss. Originally, this started out as a townhouse and then it was changed to a duplex, and now it's a patio garden home. All of this within a three-month period. Um, we, when we met with Mr. Pettyway, we were not, we were surprised because just a week before we met with him, he gave us a copy of a uh, completely different uh, proposal, you'll see that picture of the house and that proposal I gave you right before the survey. It's completely, completely different for a three or four house unit that he was talking about. And when we met with him and it changed to six, when we asked him what had happened, um, we asked him four different times what happened between the, when he came and talked to us the week before, weeks before and now, but he did not provide us with, a, with any type of answer. Um, not, not only at that meeting, Mr. Pettyway stated that this rezoning deal is a done deal, and he repeated it numerous times to the residents that were at the meeting. And I'm not exactly sure what, what kind of um, meaning he meant by that, but maybe he can explain that itself. Um, we are, the neighbors also had concerns about parking, how the fencing would be, had concerns about the drainage, 
he's going to have to build that property up somewhat. So that excess water is going to have to fall off somewhere, either on his neighbor's property or either in the street on Motley Drive. <coughs> Uh, our initial survey of uh, 26 property owners, 19 property owners were opposed. Seven homeowners failed to return our solar survey. We did a follow-up survey in, uh, this past week. Uh, we did not have, not have a good response, but 13 people opposed the rezoning effort for six housing units. Uh, the effects of rezoning, they're gonna have, um, it's gonna affect the entire neighborhood. Um, once you start rezoning part of it, it's going to open up the whole neighborhood for rezoning. And I'm not sure that the neighborhood has not had a, a, a discussion, or a neighborhood-wide discussion about something as important as this. Um, neighborhood stability and ownership concerns was another, was another issue that we were concerned about. We want to make sure that Ms. P Mr. Pettyway is going to control this property that it would not be someone else, he won't turn around and just sell that property uh, within a, a year or so. Um, the way he has those houses all grouped together, six houses in, in a .95 acre lot, it, it, that's, uh, that's just a little too congested for most everybody. Uh, again, I'm here on behalf of the uh, <coughs> North Montgomery Neighborhood Alliance, and those neighborhoods of Shadow Heights, Brook Road, King Hill, Chisholm, Madison Park, Parktown, Rosewood, and King Hill. I think I got everybody. Thank you. Ms. Petaway, uh, let me ask you a question, please, sir. These, these lots, uh, are, are are they all point point nine five acres, or are they? Is that just one that's of that, them? That's the whole piece. That's the whole piece. Yeah. Okay, so you got six it, on a little less than an acre. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, someone else, sir, would you like to to speak, please? Your name. Address and yeah. All right, sir. My name is Robert Taylor the third. Um, I grew up in Madison Park, and we still have family property there. And just two doors down from where the development will be, we operated a charitable organization for some ten years there. Uh, the old Madison Park school building, and we've been instrumental in getting it uh, now owned by the city, so we expect to have uh, activities out there, community center, et cetera. Uh, I'm gonna, not gonna speak to the engineering aspects of this. I'm just gonna speak to the needs of it. Uh, here's a petition that we have here with some 90 signatures of persons that live in Madison Park. And I think the issue is Madison Park and not King Hill or wherever else. Personally, I know of persons who would very much like to reside back in Madison Park where they grew up, but there's a problem. Uh, there's a lot of abandoned property there that um, is not up for sale. Uh, it's being left unattended and creating hazards for the community. I do know if a person is going to invest in new construction, then that person is certainly going to be diligent about making sure that property is kept because it's an investment. Moreover, it's an opportunity for some young folk to move back to the community. Uh, my community is a dying community. A lot has to do with property that's our property now nothing can be done with it, it's abandoned, and um, it lends itself for a lot of opportunities for crime, et cetera. I think this project would be a good one. It's, I look at it as a form of revitalization of the community. 
I think if there are some issues with how much it needs to be this, that, or the other, I think that can be worked out. But I certainly think that we should be very much optimistic when someone wants to invest in the community. Because except for Mr. Pettyway, I don't know of anyone else that's doing that. And, uh, and I just think new construction with people that's going to have pride in being able to move into some new stuff is going to have a positive effect on the community. In fact, I would hope it would affect some of the near properties, nearby properties that have been abandoned and folks have walked away from. So I'm in favor of whatever is going to be progressive. And I think Mr. Petway needs to be commended for making this kind of investment in a community that otherwise is sort of falling to the wayside. Besides, there's a lot of good people out there. Sir. I said, besides, there's a whole lot of good people out there. Oh, yes. And Eric, have, Eric Motley is from there. Yes, <laughs> right down the street. Yeah. Now, we have 90 folks here who are in favor of. Now, that speaks for itself. Uh, the petition speaks to what the project is. These are the folks that have addresses in Madison Park, and I think they should be listened to. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pepper, could I ask you one more question, please, sir? Uh, he, he mentioned another situation that is created a lot that really causes some, some problems. Um, do you have title to this property? Have you closed this property? You own it. Okay. Mr. Right. Pettyway, I need you to speak in the mic. Yeah, I own it, but it's in my wife's name. I own it. All right, no, I, I, I understand. I mean, the problem that a lot of times occurs in something like this is, and especially with the property that you were talking about being around, is there's so many heirs, and you can't ever get get title to it, but you've got title I got a clear to title. it, and you could, you could build on it. Right, 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 right. As soon as you could get it resolved. That's right. All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, I have one more question. One qu one question for you. When you when you build the uh, when you build the uh, the patio garden house, are you going to lease them? Or are you going to sell them? They're going to be leased to the people in the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. We got a problem. No people want to stay in the, in the mountain park, but ain't no place. Form a state, then nobody wants to sell your land to the people to be on the mountain park. Have you thought about selling? Well, I've been there all my life. Yes, sir. So I ain't going nowhere. I've been there 56 years. Yes, sir. And ever since I was nine years old, I've been I've been a leader in the neighborhood. A lot of people that came in the neighborhood, they done did good, but they ran off. They nobody never came back to do nothing. See what I'm saying? And I've been in this neighborhood all the time, seeing all the, 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 the broke down houses, nobody doing that, you know what I'm saying? So now, I'm at a point now where I'm, I'm gonna invest back in the neighborhood. I own, in this neighborhood now, show you how bad it done got. The last 20 years, I done accumulated over nine acres of land in this neighborhood. Cause nobody won't do nothing with it. So, I'm invested in this neighborhood. I'm not, I'm not running off, man. And they know me when I tell them something. I'm a man of my word. I tell them that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good evening. My name is Earlene Wright. I'm the president of the Greater Madison Park Neighborhood Association. I live at 2761 Russell Lane in Madison Park. Um, we want to see progressive new construction in our neighborhood. When, when it's a good thing when that happens. You know, they're revitalizing, what is it, on Gray Avenue in Montgomery? They revitalize in that area. And like Mr. Taylor said, our neighborhood, it's old people out there, that neighborhood is dying. So if you bring new construction in housing, you're gonna bring in new people. New people is gonna mean more for us. More people to vote, more things to do. We're trying to revitalize our neighborhood. We, 
we uh, have uh, been petitioning with the city to get us a, the school turned into a community center, which was, is on the, uh, Mr. Carr called me not too long ago and told me that that's, the engineers are ready and coming out there to, to assess and see what they have to do. We're trying to get sewer, from not only for Motley Drive, but everywhere out there. And that's in the works. So we're trying to be a progressive neighborhood and what Mr. Pettaway is doing would only help and aid that. And we are glad to see that somebody wants to invest in Madison Park. And he, is, uh, he lives there himself. So the concerns about who's gonna live there and all that, who would be more concerned than him, being that it's his property, and he also is a resident out there. I'm sure he would vet anybody very well that comes out there. So we are, the majority of the people in Madison Park, a whole lot of the residents, are in favor for new construction. Now there are, yes, there are some that are against it, but a lot of people are against change anytime. And I think this is a young man and he needs to be able to help us with this community because, you know, all, we're all going to pass and leave this here. And for selling his property, I wouldn't sell it either. I got property out there besides my home and they're not building any more dirt. They ain't making no more of it. So if he can keep his land and improve it, let him do that. So I'm in favor of him rezoning that little one Thank little you. Spot. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Okay. Is there anybody else in the audience that on this item, if you're for this, if you're here, stand up. If you're against it, stand up. Mr. Roberts, I got a question for you. Come to the mic, please. So do I. Yes, sir. In your presentation, you mentioned drainage and that a lot needs to be built up. Are you concerned about the water coming over on you? Uh, on my neighbors, um, that w once they build it up, their water is going to have to drain off onto their property, um, or, and it's, or possibly even to the Motley Drive, the street. Is it also. coming on them now? Uh, no, sir. But you said the lot would need to be built up, yes, sir. so if that's going yes, to divert be the up. water yes, sir. away from these lots. I mean, that's you're saying two different things there. No, I no, think. I'm saying if the lot is, if they're going to landscape it and build it up, the excess water has got to come off that property some kind of way, whether it's on a neighbor's property or whether it's in the street. Yeah, well, I don't think the city's going to let him divert water on somebody else. The inspector would catch that. Uh, that's all I got. Okay. Jamie, Jamie. Uh, sir. Before you sit down, one question. Yes, sir. Uh, some of, some of the uh, people that did the survey were for were against the duplex. Now that it's not going to be a duplex, and it's just garden homes like that, would would any of their opinions change? Uh, yeah, we we de redid uh, we actually redid the survey. We didn't have a good response. There were 13, 13 people who were against it, and two people were for it with restrictions. What restriction? Uh, they wanted. They wanted to know. Uh, I have to look at the exact form here. I'm sorry. There's several of these marked single home. Yes. Uh, one was the number of homes. Uh, they wanted less than six homes, but they were amenable to um, to multiple homes. But they wanted less than six and the others were about drainage. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? All right, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, come on to the mic, if you would, please, sir. On the drainage part, I'm a landscaper. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Get to, get. I on the drainage part, I'm a landscaper. This is what I do. I deal with water. But all the water on these lots is drained to the back, just like your neighbor do. Wow, there ain't no problem with drainage. Okay, thank you. Okay. Everyone, sir, is there is there a motion? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Look at him. He's got another one. 
You got another one? Yeah, we want to plant it too. We got to get legal. You, hey, you're going to get it all taken care of one night, aren't you? Well, next item is by the same petitioner. It's a request for final approval of Kingdom Place Plat Number One on the northwest corner of Motley Drive and Old Tumka Highway. It's in a uh, R60D and B2 districts. Okay. Anybody? Uh, you, uh, yeah, we would we would like to plant it because that's part of the development as we work on the plans for drainage and other stuff through the engineering department. So uh, we would appreciate your approval of the planting. And of course, all this anything we do is going to be subject to the final approval of the council on the zoning because the zoning has to go to the council. Right. Um, okay. Anybody have a comment or a question? Anyone wish to speak for or against this? If not, a motion's in order. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay, Tommy. Next item is about Jeff Cody, engineers and surveyors on behalf of Ms. Flossie Thomas requesting final approval of Flossie Thomas Flat number one on the south side of Goldbug Street, east of North Dakota Street. It's a M, it's a R sixty M district. <clears throat> this is a very narrow substandard lot that never got planted in the past and we propose to bring it in. You can't do any development unless you got it paid before the city. And then we may have to ask for some variances. We don't know everything we're going to want to do out there. So, but uh, there'll be no more than one structure on it. And uh, hopefully we can work it where with a couple of variances we can get a structure on it. But we ask your approval to plant it, get it of record. Uh, so it can be worked with. Is that structure a mobile home possible? No, okay. absolutely not. Okay, thank you. But that structure on it is a tiny home. How long has it been there? I don't know. It's fairly new. Yeah. That's probably why it's coming before us now because they probably went to ask for power. But it's a, what's commonly known as a tiny home. I assume you've seen it. I have not seen it. The survey crew did brought the information no. in, and I've not seen the structure you're talking about. Miss Miss Floss is supposed to be here, and uh, I'll ask her in case questions like this arose. You want to ask her again, please? Miss Floss, please give your name and address first. Plus. Flossie Thomas, 808 West Fleming Road, Montgomery, yes, Alabama. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> How long has that little structure been there? Um, since about June. June? <coughs> it, it, it's not inhabitable now, is it? No. I mean, it actually looks nice, but... I know, I know that's what created you coming here. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Smith or somebody in the office about the, uh, the remarks. This plat is not in compliance with the zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations for the district due to the lot being substandard in width and required uh, lot area. What's your question? So you guys don't agree with it? No, that's saying that it doesn't comply with the lot area for the requirement of that zoning district, but she doesn't own any more property, so she can't meet the lot area. She's boxed in. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have a question on the planning commission? Anyone else wish to speak for or against it? Okay, if not, a motion's in order. 
Let, let me ask one question to, to clarify something and, and for, for my... Is this just for the tiny house? A, a, am I understanding that correctly? Is, is, is that what... It is a tiny house. And, and you want this uh, done for the tiny house? It's, it's like a modular unit. Yes. Small yes, modular sir. unit. So all of this is for that, that modular unit? Yes, sir. To get it in compliance. Yes. Okay. They can't get a CO without platting the property. I'm sorry? They cannot get a, right, a, right, a, right. a CO but without platting the property. Okay. All right. And, and there's no one for or against this. Okay. If a motion's in order, move to approve. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Is that five? Yeah, it was, okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. The next item is by Flowers and White Engineering. <clears throat> On behalf of Frank Thomas, requesting final approval of Hyundai Crossing Plat Number One on the east side of Norman Bridge Road, across from the east end of Hyundai Boulevard in a B2Q district. Good evening. My name is Frank Thomas, 2855 Zelda Road, representing myself. KJ is in uh, Troy tonight working on something for us, so he asked me to stand in for him. Frank, if you don't mind, just, just present what you've uh, what you got and what sure. you're trying to do. That's all. So a couple of years ago, we came in and actually what that represents is Hyundai Boulevard intersects 331. This is on the east side of 331. Uh, where you see it says Hyundai Crossing Way is an extension of Hyundai Crossing, if you will, over 331 and into my property. That's a B2 zoning, I believe, there. And um, lot one was originally on the other side of the new extension. In meeting with ALDOT, ALDOT was going to require, well, they're still making me put in a northbound diesel coming in, southbound left turn going in, northbound axle coming out, but they were going to make me come in that new Hyundai Crossing Way and go about 400 feet to turn into the lot being on the north side, because you would have to cross over traffic to do that. It would potentially stack traffic back south. So we're moving the lot to the other side of the road. Where we can come in from the south, make a right turn, and immediately make a right turn into the lot, and there's no stacking because you can get out of traffic immediately. So we're simply just going to the other side of the road. Okay. Anyone with a question or a comment on the Planning Commission? If not, anyone wish to speak for or against? All right. A motion's in order. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Frank. The next item is by Gonzalez Strength and Associates on behalf of Hyundai Transys Georgia Seating Systems LLC. It's a request for final approval of Interstate Industrial Plat, Industrial Park Plat number 16 on the southernmost end of Farmer Parkway. It's a M3 district. My name is Dan Allen with Gonzalez Strength and Associates, 1550. Woods of River Chase Drive, Hoover. Um, this is a single lot that we were requesting approval on that's located within the existing Interstate Industrial Park. This particular piece is currently just acreage and we're here tonight to uh, request approval of this one lot. Okay. Anyone have a question, comment? Anyone wish to speak for or against? If not, a motion's in order. Move to approve. Second, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Okay, the next item is by Thompson Engineering on behalf of Americo Real Estate Company, requesting final approval of U-Haul Montgomery Plat Number One on the northeast corner of Mildred Street and Sarah Street in a T4O district. 
Good evening. My name's Johnny Holly. I'm with Thompson Engineering, 2970 College Hill Road, Mobile, Alabama. Here tonight on behalf of uh, U-Haul Montgomery in their effort to uh, create a one-lot subdivision. As I understand it, they were in the process of renovating an existing building on this piece of property, and it was discovered that it was multiple lots, and uh, it was asked of them to have it all combined into one lot. So that's what we're here tonight to seek approval of one lot subdivision. Okay, anybody have a question on the planning commission or a comment? Anyone wish to speak for or against? If not, there's motions in order. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you. all You're going downhill when you go back to Mobile, you know. <laughs> the next item is presented by TTL on behalf of Commercial Properties, Inc. It's a request for final approval of Tacala <coughs> Montgomery Plat Number 1 on the west side of Congressman W.L. Dickinson Drive, 200 feet south of North Chase Boulevard. It's a M1 district. Yes, I'm Tim Miner with Tacala, which is a Taco Bell franchisee out of Best Heavy Hills, Alabama. Uh, I'm here to request approval for the plat on W.L. Dickinson Drive for construction of a new Taco Bell. Okay. Any comments or questions from the Planning Commission? This was not already platted? No, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Anyone wish to speak for or against? If not, a motion's in order. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. The next item by the Broadway Group, on behalf of Darnell Bennett, requesting final approval of TBG Day Street Flat number one on the northeast corner of Day Street and Air Base Boulevard. It's a M1 and M3 districts. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Deanna Heitch. I'm with the Broadway Group out of Huntsville, Alabama, 216 West Side Square. I am here to ask you for approval to subdivide a just approximately six acre parcel, a little less than six acre parcel, um, on Day Street. And uh, we are uh, looking to uh, um, commercial retail development is what I'm trying to spit out um, eventually and and so hopefully two projects for the pro for the property right now um, working just to get it planned at first okay is there a question or a comment from the Planning Commission do you know what's going to locate there I am under a confidentiality agreement. I have it. I have a couple of interested parties. We have not confirmed anything yet. We're working on some plans. You always wind. All of us wind up in something like that when you get well. You can't talk, <laughs> or you're not supposed to. I'm Everybody supposed already to. knows at the end of the day. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so I'm not supposed to acknowledge. <laughs> that, well, you're it's doing awkward. Exactly. I don't like that question. You all get me with that one every time. <laughs> Okay, anybody got a comment or a question? If uh, I guess the right initials, would you uh, agree? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. I said if I guess the right initials, would you agree? I might smile for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone wish to speak for or against? If not, a motion's in order. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? And that was four to, uh, any against? Okay, so that's four to one. So it didn't get approved. Because for sure, can We're I caught, table? Ma'am? Is it too late to table? That was Tommy, you wanna help us on that one? If, uh, if you don't appeal it, if you, if you just wait, it, wait out 30 days, we'll, record, we'll sign it and you can take it and record it. It has to be a 30-day wait. If I apologize. If there's not a material error in here, in, this, in the plat, 
if there's not a material error in it, and it, you know the boundary survey closes, we don't have any material issue to not approve it. So the law, state law says, you have to wait 30 days, and in once 30 days expires, we can we'll sign it and you can take it and record it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Gentlemen. See, that, look how easy it is uh, in Sagan. Montgomery, huh? Sagan. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. I said, look how easy it is in Montgomery, Huntsville. <laughs> we want to give you some more development. <laughs> and I'm headed back to Huntsville, which is uphill. Yeah, you got to go uphill, <laughs> and you? Thank you. Okay. The, the next item is about Pilgrim Engineering on behalf of J.M. Wood Auction, LLC, requesting to rezone one parcel of land 17.63 acres on the south side of Ashley Road, approximately 1,000 feet east of Old Selma Road from Ag 1, M1, and, F and Flood Hazard Districts to an M1 district. Uh, I'm, I'm Pep Peel Green, Peel Green Engineering, 10270 Highway 80 East, Montgomery. Uh, this is the site of the JM1 Wood Auction Company. And go, go back, go back to the previous. If you see there, part of this is zoned M1, part of it's ag, and then most of it's in the flood zone anyway. But sometime back in the 90s, there were two buildings on this site. The one that's zoned M1 had a building on it. They tore it down. Well, actually, there were two buildings side by side. They tore it down, and they redid the building on the other side, not in the M1, not realizing they didn't have the zoning. And now they, the, their bankers are saying, your building ought to have the correct zoning for what you're in. I mean, it's how we got to this point, Tanya and I talked about it, you know, how did we get to this point and not redo it 20 years ago, sometime in late 90s or early 2000, I don't know. Or maybe we just thought there was a building there and there was some M1 zoning and it looked good and didn't really do it, but we did some survey work out there when, when we renovated the building and we found that a few years ago. So we're here to try to bring it back to standard. Just cleaning up. Cleaning up. I wonder how they got a permit to do it, to build it. I don't know. I, you know, when you, when you go out there and you look, well, that's the building, and it's right in the middle of the lot, more or less, and so you just really don't think about it. But we have more checks and balances now than we used to, so. Okay. Anybody have a comment or question on the planning committee? If not, anyone wish to speak for or against? If not, a motion's in order. I move to approve, uh, Mr. Chair, with the uh, recommendations of the planning uh, department. The planning department have a recommendation on that. You mean the qualifier? Right. So you, your, your motion is to approve with the qualifier? Correct. Okay. Yeah, can, I, you, can you specify what the qualification is? Uh, well, and basically what the, what the uh, planning department recommend, they said they do not object to propose. And basically I think, if I'm, if I'm wrong, Robert, that he basically want them to do exactly what they said they're going to do with it. In other words, if we go in there and we do this, and then that give, give uh, J.M. Woods grounds to do or build anything they want to right there. So, so are, that, you, are you restricting this for the auction company? Right. Is that what I'm asking? Oh, that's what I'm asking. Absolutely. Okay. Pep, is that a that's that's okay. I talked to him about it, and he said we're not we're not going anywhere. Okay. We've been here for 20, 30 years, and we're not changing. Okay. <clears throat> so right. that's okay. All right. So everybody understands that it's a motion to approve uh, with the qualifier that's presently on it that it will remain only an auction Correct. company. Okay. Um, and you're all right with that? Yeah. Anyone else have a comment or question? Uh, all right. Second. And I'll that's second. a, yeah, that was a motion. Yes. Yeah. All right. And you got a second, Ms. Reed. Second. All those in favor? Okay. 
All right. Next, the next, next item is by Pilgrim Engineering on behalf of Johnny Moore and Sanderson LLC, requesting to rezone five lots on the west side of Sprott Drive, approximately 2,800 feet north of Edna Break Lucas Drive from Ag 1 to B2. All right, Pip. Anybody uh, have a comment or a question right now on the on this? Yeah. Pep, would you lead in for us then? Right, go okay, ahead. If, if you uh, if you remember two or three months ago, there was a someone came to ask to rezone this to M1, and Brian Sanderson asked me about it. And I said, Well, Brian, I just I just don't see. I don't know why you need M1. I mean, what you're wanting to build is fine in business, and business is not near as objective or objectionable. What they're proposing to do is build an office, and say for a home builder, a contractor like Moore Electric that's there. He'll have a small office, probably some storage in the back, and you know they may have an outbuilding where they have storage. That's, kind of like where my office is. I have an office, but I have uh, a shed in the back where I store my hubs and stakes and you know, the, all the things we use that you don't want to have to pay heating and cool for. So this is a, a, great, a great place for uh, that type of business and they can easily go and in, in, uh, offices like that are easily acceptable in business. And then you don't have to worry about uh, what's happening around you. Now, the, uh, the objection last time, as I understand it, was the lady that lived behind was objecting to it and because of traffic and whatever. And, and I understand that, but you got to have to know that Johnny Moore's been there for 25 years Sanderson's been there for 15, and her house has been there for six or five. That's not a place that you would develop for residential, so if you can't put business or something there, it'll never do. Um, it, as zone for ag, you can build a house, but you can't build a mobile home. You have to have special permission to put a mobile home in ag district. The uh, the building right behind, at the end of that, if you see there's a, a building there, it's uh, Woodworking Dynamics. That's an 18,000 square foot woodworking shop. If you go to the west quarter of a mile, it's Kilby Prison. If you go to the right a quarter of a mile, it's uh, Ohio Ferrell or the Dow Chemical. You go north, uh, there's Knox Kershaw Manufacturing and a railroad track. This is not a residential kind of place. It's, it's just not, and it hadn't been forever. If you go south towards the interstate, you got the uh, Boys Industrial Park. I mean, the, uh, yeah, that's what they call it, isn't it? Boys, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. White so, building. Yeah, but, and so if, if you look at the thing that's on there now, at the, at the top of that sheet, you'll see something that's really gray. That's where the effluent from the uh, Ohio Ferro plant used to go into a pond where they cleaned it. So, you know, folks, this is not residential material. This is a place where we ought to have business. I think putting retail in there is okay. I mean, the, the Lake that's there adjacent to the uh, one lot five, that was Froggy Bottom Enterprises. They dug soil out of the ground and sold it. They trucked it out, went out down Sprott Road, went, went everywhere, and big trucks. So the road is more than adequate to accommodate whatever you put on it. They were there for years and years, and eventually they ran out and it filled up, so it's, it's a really nice lake, so it's kind of prettied up in there, two or three people that live along there. It's a, it's a neat place up there. Also, the front of these lots, uh, you can't see it, but there's like a 125 foot, I think, high power line easement 
runs right down Sprott Road in front of these lots, and the front of them probably at least 25 percent in the hundred year flood. So this is, you know, this is just not great land to do anything. But I think somebody like me or a home builder, this would be a good place to be. Uh, and this morning. I got a call from Brian saying that the lady that lived there has agreed to purchase lots three, four, and five from Johnny Moore that he owns. And she, if she does that and they've made an agreement, then she wouldn't object to us rezoning lots one and two. Now, I've, I haven't talked to her and I don't know her, so I don't have any way of telling you that. So. Maybe okay, so, <laughs> you know, we may be going for just lots one and two, which is okay, I think. So I'll, I'll pass it off and let you talk to... Well, wait a minute before you do. Okay. Um, you talking about that dirt or gravel hauled out of there. You said lot five. But aren't right you behind talking, lot aren't five. Aren't you talking about nine, 10, 11, and 12? That's where that lake is there, that big pond? Uh, she probably knows more about it. Well, if you look there on what's labeled uh, lot five, and, and yeah, but that's not low. It's not. It hasn't been dug out. It's no, not it's on, it's on top of a hill. It's what? It's on top of a hill. Isn't it? No. No hill there. Who? Oh well, that was wrong. It wasn't Froggy Bottom. She's Froggy Bottom. <laughs> But it was, you know, it was a bar pit. So uh, it's behind lot five. She lives on lot seven, I think. Isn't that right? Come to the mic. Come to the mic, please. Name? My name is Susan Golden, and I live at 644 Sprott Drive. Um, I own all of the adjacent properties to lot five and the two behind it. I don't know exactly what the lot numbers are. I'd have to look them up. Um, yes, I have made an agreement with Mr. Moore to purchase the um, other three lots that he owned. And I did state that I would not object to the rezoning of Mr. Sanderson's lots according if we have some provisions made. There's one thing I do want to show you today. I didn't have a chance to get it developed. That was today. Yeah. Completely over the road. There's the across the road where all the boarders are supposed to go. That's where it ends up. Does it have anywhere to go? State. Looks like my house Is that today. On Sprott? Is that on Sprott? Yes, sir. The state owns a good bit of the property around this area. Um, and they do not maintain the beaver situation. So therefore, it causes water backup. Um, behind the woodworking dynamics place that he was talking about today, part of that's owned by the city. And it is full of beavers. They have dammed it up. Today, on my other lot behind my house, it was completely flooded because of that situation. I don't have an objection if we can just get this worked out. So there's something that we can do because you go in and you build a building, you put asphalt and you put concrete down, there's gonna be more water runoff and there's nowhere for it to go now. And it's flooding on my property. It floods, most of it drains a lot to my fish pond. Well, it looks like Sprott Drive has been recently paved. Is that correct? It has, but they did not do anything to the sides of the road. They went in and put dirt in, but it's all washed away now because of the flooding situation. Yeah. You know, if. If there's a small business there that, you know, we don't have a lot of truck traffic and that type thing, then I don't object to it. But I still think there needs to be some, some kind of restriction to water because there's no sewer there, there's no city water, there's no fire protection. And you put a big building out there and it catches on fire, then it's gonna spread to everything else out there. One other thing, I did a survey of how many residential lots are around there and it's a higher percentage residential than it is business. I know he was stating that there was more business there, but on Sprott, 
and a little bit of Edna Break, it's primar primarily residential anyway. Okay, so you want to state exactly what you're requesting that would be a uh, qualification? Well, the first one they said they were going to put a retention pond in if they build there to help, you know, control any water runoff. Personally, if they want to do that, you know, to help the water runoff and make sure that they're not, these lots, Mr. Moore went in when he bought them originally and there was a big mound of dirt there where they had had overburden from them digging out the ponds. He went in and leveled it out even with the road, but then it all slopes backwards. So those lots now, they're level to a certain extent, but if you go on the backside of them, that's where all the water stands and where it's flooding. So, What, what is the proposal that we're making, Pep? Do you know? Uh, that we're trying to make. What, what, are, what, what is the proposal? Evidently, y'all are somewhat microphone, in agreement. Microphone, Pep, microphone. Oh, okay. We want to rezone it to uh, B2. What lots? Uh, in this case, it would be the uh, lots one and two. What are you looking at? If you look up there, okay, it's lots the- lots one uh, and two. Were those two any, right there, yes. Ma'am, are there any restrictions on those two lots that you want to qualify it with? I don't know why we would qualify it. I'm, I mean, I'm, just, you know, I'm, I'm asking, I'm, I'm confused as to what we're trying to do. No, I, I, you know, I don't know why you would qualify it. I'm, you just want to rezone those two lots. I just want to rezone those two lots. I, I understand about the water, but Sprott Drive is in a hundred year flood. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I, have, a, I have the map. It's in the hundred year flood. The land on the other side of wood, woodworking dynamics is in the hundred year flood. The reason he's built where he is is because he's not in the hundred year flood in that little corner. So those, no, yours not your, see it kind of, it kind of goes uphill. Sprite drives low and behind it's low and it goes uphill to where everybody's built which makes sense. Uphill being, see where a lot 12 and seven are at the top? That's kind of uphill. And where that 12 and 14 are written is where woodworking dynamics is built. And then you can see the blue over to the left. That's a hundred year flood. I mean, there's only limited amount of space you can build on. We'll have to put a detention pond in anyway. We don't have a choice about that. Uh, I don't know how you can qualify it well, that's, well, I didn't, I, maybe I was using the wrong word. Okay. That the retention pond, I didn't know whether you were requiring a retention pond or. Well, the city, city requires that. Well, that's, that's what I was trying to, I couldn't yeah. figure out what yeah, she was, city, where she city, was going. Okay. Yeah, we would have to, uh, of course, they'd have to have septic tanks. There's no sanitary, but we would have to okay. uh, put the tension in. Okay. And there's really very little land on those lots to build on. Out of three acres, it might be an acre and a half that you can build on, and it's uphill. Okay. I understand the, the issues, but the, the Sprite Ma Drive. Make sure you have no objection to what he's wanting. Not on those first okay. two lots, as long okay. as like, Thank you know, you, it's required for that. I have one other question. Um, if they're wanting to rezone these two lots to business, why aren't the businesses around there required to be zoned business? Required, I, I missed that. What Pre-existing. Okay, they're wanting to rezone these two lots as business. Commercial. That won't mean any, nothing else around there is business. The businesses are there is on agriculture. I, I don't know, is that right? It's a pre-existing situation. Well, if you remember, it was, 15 years ago or so, the city annexed uh, Ohio Farrell plant because they wanted the tax dollars. And it goes down one of these streets. A lot of this wasn't in the city's planning jurisdiction at that time. So they are existing non-conforming, basically. Now, Sanderson's lot, it's zoned, uh, uh, what, agriculture. You could probably, he, he, that's a horticulture business. You could put that in agriculture. More electrics, no, that wouldn't go. But Sanderson probably qualifies those others. They're not zoned correctly. If you only wanted 
rezone one and two, why'd you submit five lots? Well, because, because Mr. Moore wanted to rezone, he owns the other three. But until today, that's what we were going for until the neighbors got together and solved the problem. They're buying those three lots. I haven't yeah. done so, so what you're asking, Pep, is to rezone, as of this moment, to rezone one and two only. Right? That's right. We'll, we'll take three, four, and five out. Right. We just want lots one and two. Three, four, and five, she will have. Will remain, well, whatever, but it's to remain what it is right now. You yeah. just want one and two. Right. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All oh, those in favor. Okay. One and two. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. One and two. Right. That was hard, but I think we understand it now. <laughs> we got it. Thank it you. took a while to get there. Okay, no. Thank you all. <laughs> Is there anything else? If not, we're adjourned.